So I want to talk about the relationship between bond order and the sigma and pi bonds. So let's start with an example. Imagine we have two hydrogen atoms. And as you bring them together, they're going to form molecular orbitals. And so if we put this in a molecular orbital diagram, we can calculate the bond order. And so the formula for bond order is you take the number of bonding electrons, number of bonding electrons, minus the number of anti-bonding electrons, number of anti-bonding electrons. So you take this number, and then you divide the whole thing by two, and that's what your bond order equals, bond order. Bond order equals the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding electrons. Divide the thing by two. So let's see what happens with hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron, each one. And so this, this is, of course, our sigma, and this is our antibonding sigma. And since they go to the lower energy state first, you know, off bow principle, the lowest energy is stable, so we'll go here. That means we have one bonding orbital. So we take the number of bonding electrons, and so one bonding electron has, or one bonding orbital has two electrons. So that's two minus, we have zero antibonding. Divide the whole thing by two, and that equals two over two, and that equals one. So there's something interesting about this. Before we, uh, before we get into it, let's say one is the bond order. Let's draw the Lewis structure for hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen we have a single bond. Now, we have a single bond, and we have one bond order. What this means is that whatever we get for bond order, that's the bond type we'll get. If this was a double bond, we would have two for bond order. If it was a triple bond, we would have three for bond order. So from this, we can conclude that bond order equals the bond type. And this is assuming we're using homonuclear diatomics, which just means we're using two atoms of the same type, you know, two hydrogens or something like that. So let's see what happens when we have two nitrogens. Well, I'll just get to the nitrogens in a second. So right here we've decided that this is a single bond, it's a bond order of one. What is it? Is it a sigma bond? Is it a pi bond? Well, we know that the first bond has to be sigma. So this must be a sigma bond. So if we have a bond order, let's, let's, let's make a small table. Bond order and with the types of bonds that we can have. Actually, hold on, whoops. I'm just gonna erase something here. Let's imagine we have a single, double, or triple bond. Then, is it sigma or is it pi? We could have sigma or pi bonds. Those are the two bonds we can have. So we know that if it's a single bond, that bond must be sigma. So we have one sigma, and that doesn't leave any room for pi, so we have zero. So with the double bond, what would that look like? And we'll use this ambiguous atom. I'll get back to the uh, nitrogens in a second. Let's use ambiguous atom X merging with another ambiguous atom X. So they're going to form a sigma bond. This overlap is the sigma bond. But imagine, imagine we had a bond order of 2. For X2, the bond order was 2. Then we would have to have a double bond. So we can't have two sigma bonds. So what happens is the electron will come out and it will get repulsed here. There's a, a, a thing repulsion because we have electrons here and it repulses the other electrons. So that's why there's this bit of distance. Actually, whoops. So we have, the, we have the one, the bond order of two. And of course on the other side of the atom, we have the same thing that the electron comes out and we will get another overlap right here. And that's our pi bond. We'll have a pi bond 
and we will have a sigma bond. And so you can imagine this as here's one of our bonds and here's the other one of the bonds. That explains our double bond. And so a Lewis structure would be X, X, and two bonds there. So what about nitrogen? Well, I'm going to rewrite nitrogen now. Nitrogen, nitrogen. Well, nitrogen on the periodic table is in its 2p shell, which means that it has its 2px, 2py, and 2pz. Now we have two nitrogens, so we'll do, I'll do another one for here. So 2px, y, and z. And nitrogen will only be able to fill up a half shell. So what happens when these nitrogens want to uh, bond is we'll have a sigma bond. And then, just like the double bond, one of them will be off to the side. But since we have two, then we bond twice. So what happens here, let's see if I can get a good color, is we end up with an overlap here, and that's our sigma bond. Then we get an overlap here, and that's our pi bond. We end up with an overlap here too. We have another, whoops, that's not sigma. That is a pi bond. And so, since nitrogen will have a triple bond, we're trying to merge three atoms. We'll have three bonds. The bond order is three. And if we look at it like this, we know that this atom will try and go for that atom. We're sharing that electron, and we're also sharing this electron. And since the first one must be sigma, we'll call that the sigma. I'll do that in a different color. This will be the sigma. And then the outer two will be pi's. So you can sort of realize, like, hey, you know, this just makes sense. These are where our pi bonds are. These are where our sigma bonds are. So if we wanted to calculate the total, oops, total number, sigma and pi, we follow a simple process. Sigma bonds and pi bonds. Sigma bonds or pi bonds. What we do is we make a molecular orbital diagram of the two atoms. Then we count the pi bonds and sigma bonds we add them and that's our total number of molecular orbitals but if we didn't add them I can actually just erase this well I mean we're really left with it we just make a diagram and we count the pi bonds and the sigma bonds we know that if we have like the 2p, x, y, and z, if it's three, then we're gonna have a triple bond. The first one is sigma, the other two are pi. 